Today, I'll tell you about how I set up my home network to give me the best options for security and privacy. We'll go through my objectives and all the parts I used. Doing this in the past would have been very expensive and complicated, but using software that I wrote, I've managed to simplify it. Best of all, this method makes it easy for all users of my network. No special instructions are necessary to use it. Stay tuned and let's get started. My objective is to make my home network conveniently private and secure. How do I do this? And make sure you listen to the word convenient. I set some objectives for myself so it's clear what I'm trying to do. One, there should be automatic VPN access with no device setup. Two, I need an option for non-VPN internet. Three, there should be ad blocking capability like Piho. Four, there should be an easy option for using wired networking instead of just Wi-Fi. I'll explain why these objectives are important. Number one, automatic VPN access. If you're single and live alone in your house or apartment and you have few devices, this may be of less concern. But for typical households, we have the issue of multiple devices, often a dozen or more that use the internet. This number is growing because of the Internet of Things devices and smart TVs. It is also very important to use a VPN to hide an IP address, as I mentioned in other videos. The data pair of GPS location and IP address is a regularly sold piece of data and can identify you exactly each time you visit any website. If a visitor borrows your network and does something illegal like download a movie, you get identified and you get served with a lawsuit. From personal experience, it is extremely hard to discipline multiple people to always turn on a VPN even if it's installed on their device already. And of course, you can't enable VPN for visitors. And some devices like IoT devices cannot be configured with a VPN. So the goal is to minimize the friction when forcing your home users to access the internet with a VPN. Number two, access to a non-VPN network. Unfortunately, there are situations where you cannot use a VPN. Netflix blocks VPNs, and same with a bank or a website. So in emergencies, you have to have an alternative. Though the goal is to use a VPN most of the time. Number three, ad blocking. Ad blocking is related to the problem of selling your IP address and location data. As it turns out, most of the tracking on the internet and selling of data is done through ad companies that put little tracker pages on websites and apps. Those are not benign personal ads. They actually capture IP, location, email, and other identifiers, and they sell that data. One of the ways to stop this is by using a special DNS called Pi-Hole. What this does is identify the ad blocking domains, and then it sends the traffic intended for ad companies to a black hole. So the ad links don't work and the ad companies do not get the messages. Number three, wired networking. When apps want to harvest your exact location or your MAC address, they capture this data from your Wi-Fi adapter using something called Wi-Fi triangulation. But here's the interesting fact. If you use a wired connection, then all the risks of Wi-Fi triangulation disappear. So, using wired access whenever possible protects your data. And of course, a wired option gives you a faster internet connection. So here's my setup. In order to simplify my network, I decided to split my network directly from my DSL modem. I wanted to give me two separate wired trunks. One trunk will just come from my regular Wi-Fi router. In my case, my original router is an Apple Airport Extreme. It doesn't matter what brand the first router is as long as it has multiple ethernet ports. Now, from my first Wi-Fi router, I attach an ethernet cable and then I feed that through my VPN router, which is this device. This is a wired router. 
What I did was convert my product called Brax Wi-Fi Router into a wired router. This uses a Raspberry Pi 4 with my software. No special thing is required here. All I needed was to attach a gigabit ethernet USB 3.0 adapter to it. And my new version of my Brax Wi-Fi software will automatically detect it and switch it into wired routing mode. Important to note, that the adapter needs to support USB 3.0 and that you use the 3.0 ports on the Raspberry Pi 4 which are blue. So blue to blue. So we're clear how this is used. The main signal comes through the main ethernet port and the ethernet adapter becomes the output to go to the other devices on your network. Now, this VPN router uses my Bytes VPN service, which is special because it can use Pi-hole ad blocking and it's available for free. All you do is select a profile for no ads and it automatically passes the DNS through a Pi-hole server. So I get a double benefit here. I have a gigabit speed VPN and then it uses Pi-hole ad blocking automatically. Nothing else special required. By the way, the Bytes VPN service also includes a Tor routing service if you want to route to Tor instead of a VPN. But for my home setup, I'm not using Tor. I'm using the VPN so it's fast. Next step is to spread the VPN internet all over my house. How do you do this? Now, this will depend on how you want to spread your wired ethernet signal all over your house. I'll give you two hardware devices to work with. First is an ethernet switch. This is like an ethernet splitter. All it does is spread the signal to multiple ports and it also makes sure to add power to the cable if a cable run is too long. Now, ethernet switches do not do any network routing. It just duplicates the network electrically. So this is not a good option if there are too many devices attached such as in an office with, let's say, 50 users. This could slow down a network. But for home use, this is perfectly fine. Here I have a five port ethernet switch, which allows me to split the signal four ways. So one port will be the incoming signal and the rest will be the outgoing. It doesn't matter which port you use since they all just get duplicated electrically, as I said earlier. Just to make you aware, not all Ethernet switches are the same. The older and cheaper models are 10100 Ethernet, which are slower. This will cause a bottleneck. Use gigabit Ethernet switches. The designation is usually 1000 or gigabit. 100 means 100 megabits. This Ethernet switch can be added at any leg of your network cable. So I'm just alerting you to the availability of a switch. You can even use multiple Ethernet switches as needed. Just don't attach too many devices that will use it simultaneously like in an office. Now, how do you wire Ethernet cable from point to point in your house? Let me tell you about the second device and it is called a power line adapter. And I have a pair right here. There are several models of these. This one is a TP-Link and I have a second set in my house that uses Netgear. In my case, I already had two different brands of power line and they can work together. I've had no issue. But the nice thing about the different brands is that I can easily recognize which network is what. And as you will learn later, this is the way you can split your network. In my case, I pass the VPN internet over one power line pair and then the other standard internet on the other power line pair, that's a different brand. If you use one brand, you may not be able to split the network and the devices all use the same network. Just make sure you check that the technology on each power line set uses different technology. I found that Netgear didn't conflict with TP-Link, so they had different methodology. So two networks are now available to me. Also, you can actually use more than a pair. Depending on the model, you can use up to 10. Be careful with these. Too many and you will slow down your network. If they're all the same model, they will link up to the same network when you sync them. This may depend on the brand. Let me tell you the other limitations of a power line adapter. They work by sending high frequency modulated signals over the electrical wiring. But power line devices cannot go through a power strip. Many power strips have some sort of power surge or other circuitry that interferes with the power line. 
in case you get into a situation where you can't plug directly into the wall, use a three prong or grounded extension cable that's just a plain cable, nothing else on it. These devices will transmit and receive if you're on the same breaker. It will not cause a breaker switch. So houses with multiple breakers may have issues. Also, if you're in an apartment complex, it's possible that your signal may be available to other people in the same building. Again, depending on how the breakers are wired. Now, you don't have to be afraid of this. The reason is that the modern power lines have to be paired with this button over here in order to access the network. To use this, you plug in two devices on the outlet and then you hit the pairing button on each one within a time limit and the units will pair. You will see at least two of the status lights turned on. This pairing enables encryption so another power line will not read your traffic. At least that's true of the brands I've been using. Using power lines really make your network more flexible, especially if wireless Wi-Fi is not reaching another part of the house. You can always stretch the ethernet to the other side of the house with the power line. Okay, now where are we? Now we know how to spread the ethernet cabling all over the house using both ethernet switches and power line ethernet. And of course you can still do it the old fashioned way, which is to do hardwire, wire your ethernet cable with cat six cable, but that's too much work. And in my particular setup, I created two sets of internet connections. One a wired VPN and the other a regular wired internet. The next is to transform this into Wi-Fi. Like many people, you likely have some old Wi-Fi routers lying around. Maybe some old slower ones and maybe some new faster ones. So I used four Wi-Fi routers. I plug them in directly into the power line or if I need to split the signal, I use an ethernet switch. This doesn't have to be expensive. I bought this new Wi-Fi router for around 45 bucks from Best Buy. So each part of my house has two Wi-Fi options, a Wi-Fi router through the VPN router and one that's straight to the regular internet. And I duplicated this in two parts of my house. By the way, a technical detail, you can either configure your additional routers to extend a network, which is a very specific term, or to use its own subnet with its own DHCP. Again, if this is too technical, you don't worry about it. In my experience, this doesn't matter. Some cheaper routers don't allow you to extend a network. They only create a subnet. It works either way. And make sure each router has a different Wi-Fi name so you don't get them confused. Name them so it's clear which ones have VPN enabled and which ones don't. For simplification, you can use the same password on all. Going back to my overall setup because I'm using an ethernet switch, I also have the availability of wired ethernet, especially in my office so I'm able to skip using Wi-Fi if I want. This is a good thing because as I said earlier, the less you use Wi-Fi, the more difficult it is for apps to find information about you that can be sold. The only problem is that a lot of spying is done by cell phones and cell phones only use Wi-Fi. So I make sure those devices are always logged in only into the VPN network. Smart TVs that access Netflix may not like VPNs, so I connect those by a wired connection to the regular internet. From my actual experience using this setup, I found that when there's a lot of network traffic, the Raspberry Pi 4 running the Brax router software will overheat, and that can cause it to shut down the network, and then forces me to reboot it. It took me a while to discover this issue, so I changed the software to show the temperature off the device so I can remotely watch if it overheats. I then found that I have to put heat sinks on four of the chips and I also added a fan. Though it seems that I'm keeping the temperature down with the four heat sinks. So gigabit traffic seems to heat the chip here on the left. I think this is the USB 3.0 chip. The memory chip gets very hot too. So here we go. I got a sophisticated wired VPN network option now at my house. Most of the additional cost is mainly from the Raspberry Pi 4 and of course if you have to buy the Brax router software. But in the end, the result is a sophisticated network that offers so much flexibility and simplicity for using a VPN. You don't have to tell your kids or your guests to use a VPN. It's all automatic. The Brax router works best with Byte's VPN but it can actually be configured to run other VPNs, though I can't support it. 
and Byte's VPN features ad blocking, which the other VPNs don't. From a performance point of view, I'm getting anywhere from 50 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second on the VPN, depending on the Wi-Fi router I use. So clearly there's no bottleneck at the Brax router or at the VPN. Just be aware that this is a gigabit capable setup. It doesn't mean you will get one gigabit per second. That is theoretical. The practical limit of these networks is around 100 megabits per second, which is plenty for normal use, and most DSL services don't go over that in real life. I have listed the parts I used in the description, and the Brax router software is the newer version, so note that versions using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus is not suited for the wired VPN routing. Stick to Wi-Fi routing on those models. Hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know in the comments below if you follow the setup and tell me how it turned out. And if you liked the video, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you for watching.